Hello and welcome. My name is Andy and this is So Andy Sews. I thought I'd come to you this week and just tell you about my plans for March, what I'm hoping to make in March. And I'm hoping that if I tell you and put it on here that I'll actually get some of this done. Now March is quite a busy month for us. We're going away in, in a little uh, couple of weeks time. It's Amy's birthday. So one of the things I want to make is, is for that. But first of all, I wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who commented on my vlog last week. And for people who'd said about um, my Pleiades, my French poetry dress, I think it was the lovely Ruth who first of all pointed out that she thought it might have been made a little bit too big. Now, when I when I made that dress, I, I I'd sort of I'd made it in the fabric, and it was it was it was to wear to the make at one forty. So it was a I was just pleased that I'd sort of got it finished and that it fitted. And I hadn't really looked at how it was fitting. And it was when Ruth sort of pointed out and said, well, I think it's too big in your shoulders. And I looked back at some pictures and I, I thought, you're absolutely right. Um, I could see it from the photographs afterwards where what what exactly she meant and a couple of others of you had commented and said the same sort of thing so huge thanks for that and huge thanks for telling me sort of quickly because i looked at the photographs and i thought yes i do need to make adjustments to it it's not fitting right and it was before i cut out the lovely atelier brunette fabric at the back there i have originally made that dress in a size 16 and I adjusted the shoulders slightly to take them up a little bit because the waistline wasn't sitting where it should do. Now, looking back at the photographs, I've reprinted the pattern out in a size 12. So I've gone down two sizes and I will do a full bust adjustment. I'm also going to take some length out of the body of the bodice, both at the front and at the back, because when I look back at those photographs, I don't think the back is sitting correctly either. I think it's too low. So I'll take um, some fabric out of the bodice from the front and the back, make a twirl up and then see how it's uh, fitting then. But I'm determined to get this pattern right. I think it's a lovely pattern. I think the shape suits me. Um, and I'm really happy that you, you told me before I'd cut into my expensive fabric. So thank you. And never feel... Um, that you you shouldn't say anything or that um, I will be offended in any way, uh, not at all. I'm still learning, very much learning this. I'm learning about fitting, I'm learning about garment construction. There are people out there who've got far more experience than I have. So please, if you see something and you think I need to make a tweak to it or it's not quite sitting right, please do tell me. Uh, it's a way of me learning and me sort of progressing with my skills as well. The second thank you, is to the very lovely Claire. Now I sat there last night and Claire bought me a coffee and I was absolutely, I was speechless, I was overwhelmed. Um, it was the first coffee anyone's ever bought me. So thank you, Claire, that, uh, it, it made my made my week. <laughs> thank you so much. So <clears throat> plans wise, it's a busy month, as I said, in, in March, uh, we're going away. I'm also taking part in the So Frugal 23 challenge. It's the first time I've been involved with the challenge as a vlogger. My vlog will be going out on the 17th of March. So I am um, sort of planning what to do for that and, and um, got some ideas. So I need to do the vlog for that and get some garments made up for that. So that's put that to one side. But aside from that, I have a couple of things that I want to make. So first of all is um, something to take with us when we go away. Now we're going to Wales. I don't think it's going to be especially warm in Wales. So I wanted a sort of a fleecy jumper to wear if we go out walking. I bought this fabric from Fabric Godmother a couple of weeks or so ago. They've posted a reel showing this fabric. This is called the Baby Rory and it's a Sherpa fleece. It's really soft, quite thick, snuggly, and I think it'll make a really cozy jumper. I've got three options. So along with the, this jumper, I also want to have a look at some um, tapered trousers. I think they call them cigarette trousers or cigarette shaped leg trousers. So I want to have a look at some making some of those. I've also got um, an idea that I want to make a more casual white or a more casual linen blouse, that sort of thing. Um, 
and a jersey top, which I've got some fabric for that I've had my eye on. So going back to the to this one initially, I've got three patterns that I've had a look at that are options for making this top in. So if I go through each of the three with you and um, tell you that they're all fairly sort of similar, but slightly different in each one of their designs. Now you have to excuse me, I'm gonna to have to refer to notes because there's a lot of information that I want to sort of give you and I can't remember it all off the top of my head. So the first one is the same as the uh, Fabric God Godmother were wearing when they did the reel. And it's the Fiber Mood, yeah, another Fiber Mood pattern. It's the Fiber Mood, I think it's Diddy or Didi pullover. And you can see from the sort of line drawings, it's a higher neck with a, a zip. You've then got some stitching across the yoke here. And then I think from the drawings, it's got the cuffed sleeve and a cuff around the bottom of it. Excuse me. Sorry, I've got mohair in this jumper um, and it's going everywhere. Now, this pattern comes in sizes extra small, so triple XL, and takes between sort of 160 and 210 metres of fabric. So I've got plenty of fabric to wear it. And just sitting with this on my knee, it's nice and cosy and warm, actually. Um, the... Finished sizes for this are 36.9 for the extra small and 59.8 for the triple XL. So it's quite a, a, a roomy sweater and I think it'll be nice and warm. And I like the fact that it's sort of got the band around the bottom of it as well. Now that's the first option. The second option is a new to me pattern designer and I subscribe to their newsletter and they sent me this pattern um, over as sort of this is being released and it's the Lydia Naomi turtle sweater very similar in the neckline so I'm thinking if it's cold I want something to zip up uh, and keep me warm so it's a high neck line with this one but the the it's a looser fit so you don't have the band around the bottom it's sort of open at the bottom now, what I'm thinking with this one is, although it's a longer length, so it'll keep my bum warm, um, there might be a bit of draft going up. So I don't know if it'll be warm enough for that. So that one is um, from an XXS to a 3X with a finished bust, bust measurement of 4112 to 60.12 and it takes um, up to 1.8 meters of fabric for the largest size so again plenty of fabric for that one but like I say I'm not quite sure whether or not the because it's open at the bottom whether or not it will be warm enough for that one so option three is a sort of a cross between the two a little bit so option three is the Barra Studio um, I think it's the I can't read my writing and I haven't got my glasses on um, it's the Neela zip neck sweater right down below. We've got two options with this one. It says it says a normal length or a cropped length. Now, to me, looking at the drawings, the, there doesn't seem to be a huge amount of difference in the length of the body with this. But the bottom, um, it's the same neckline. So I've gone for the same neckline with all three. But around the bottom of this one, you put some elasticated cord in with little toggles on either side. So what I'm thinking with this one is you can either wear it open and if I make it slightly longer in the body, it will give me that sort of bum coverage or equally, if I pull the um, the cord in on either end, it will then have a more blues on effect. Um, and this one is a size XS to an XL. So the size ranging on this one doesn't seem as generous as the other two. Um, and it's up to 2.2, uh, up to two meters for the cropped one and 2.25 for the normal one. So I'll have to have a look at that one. If I decide to go for that one, I'll have to have a look and see if I lengthen the body on it, if I've got enough fabric. I should have, I should have. So there are the three options for the sweater. So that's the first thing on the list. So let me know which of the three or if you've got any other suggestions, but it's a turtleneck that I'm looking for and I can't decide at the moment whether I not want it sort of longer in the body or whether I want it um, to be more fitted around the hips. I certainly don't want it short but but fitted or non-fitted if you see what I mean. Right so the next 
thing on my list that I want to have a, a go at is the trousers, the cigarette trousers. Now, I have made the Sew Over It Ultimate Trousers. I've made quite a few pairs of those. Um, really like that pattern, but I wanted to challenge myself a little bit more and make something a little bit more tailored, I think, rather than the Ultimate Trousers. The ones that I've made, I haven't put the waistband on, so it's just sort of the plain version of those, and they don't take very long to make up those trousers, but I wanted to challenge myself a little more with some trousers and trouser fitting. So I've gone for three patterns again, um, two French and one is a paper cuts pattern. So the first one is the Maison Fauve, Fauve um, Lulu cigarette pants. Um, I'm not sure whether the size range in this is, I'm going to fit into it. It says it's from a 34 to a 46 and I've got the finished hip measurements of 33 to 43. Well, that'd be, that, they'll be okay, but I've got the finished waist measurement of 23.6 to 33. I'll have to check these these um, because that doesn't seem, this is 10 inches between the waist finished waist measurement and the hip measurement on the largest size. And I certainly don't have 10 inches between my waist, I wish, but I don't have 10 inches between my waist measurement and my hip measurements. This one is, um, there is a tutorial for this one in French, spoken French, but it shows you going through the process. The instructions um, uh, will be written in um, French, I'm guessing, with an English translation. So between combination of the written instructions and the video tutorial, I should be able to figure out what's going on. There is some lovely piping detail on the pockets of these and I like the way that the pockets sort of are slanted on the legs. So there's a lot of details in this pattern that, I, that I'm that i attracted to. So um, and there's a welt pocket. Just let's throw some welt pockets in as well. There's a welt pocket on the bum of that one. It does say it's easy to sew. Well, and I'm not sure whether my version of easy to sew is the same as their version of easy to sew. We will see. Right, so the second pair is the Atelier Scamet Attitude Pants. Now, I made an Atelier Scamet pattern last week and I was really happy with the construction of that and some of the finishing details that they put into that pattern. So a lot of the seams were bias bound. There were some French seaming. So I'm, I'm hoping or I'm guessing that the finishing um, instructions on these trousers will have the same sort of detail in them. Um, it says it's an advanced level again, this one. So it's, you see, we're sort of challenge, challenging myself a little more with, with these patterns this, this month. Um, and the finished measurements on this one are 41.3 waist and a 49.3 hip. So we're okay sort of size wise with this one. Again, um, I followed the video tutorial, which is spoken French. So I could get a few bits and pieces of it as she was talking through it last week when I made the blouse but I've made a lot of blouses in the past, so I sort of know what I'm doing with that. Trousers, it's a different ball game with this. But if I don't try, I won't learn and I won't progress. So I'm willing to have, give it a go. Now, I, for this one, have got some fabric that's been in my stash for quite a while. I can't remember where I got it from. I think it was probably Sherwood's. Um, and I'm not sure, I'm not sure if it's the right one for these trousers yet, but this is the one that I've pulled out for now. I might completely change my mind and get something else. But it's it's still got a bit of drape in it, this one. Um, it doesn't feel too thick. It's got a nice sort of texture to it, if you can see there. It's, I think it's got, it's got a slight sort of denim -y look to me, almost, but not, if you know what I mean. So I'm not 100% sure whether this is going to be sort of suitable for work. Um, the third pair of trousers that I was thinking of making were the paper cut patterns palisade pants. Now I've had this pattern in my stash for quite some time now and haven't made it up. And I think the thing that's put me off making this one up is the fact that it's got an elasticated waist at the back, which I know is great for sort of fitting issues, but Bizarrely enough to me, it, they don't feel as formal for workwear with an elasticated back. It's just, just me, just me, that one. But you do have a flat part at the front there, and then the elastication goes from the side around to the back of them, and they've got a really nice construction on the pocket 
these trousers and again the sort of the tapered leg look which is what I'm sort of going for you can make these I believe in a long version or into the shorts and I think for a pair of shorts in the summer they'd look absolutely great I'm just not 100% sure whether I'd, I'd sort of want them for work I don't know it's just, if you've made them and and you tell me what you think tell me what you think to it they go from um a now this is the finished sizes on the waist and hips before the elastic has been put in so a 33 to a 49.5 on the waist and a 35 to a 51.6 on the hip so we've got plenty of sort of um room going in in there but that's the sort of style and look that I'm going for one of those sort of three where it's a, a more tapered trouser I would like some pockets in um something with a bit of detail in it uh I'm happy to have a go at the welt pockets I've done welt pockets before so something that will challenge me a little more so if you've got any ideas um of other patterns that you think might be suitable please let me know and I shall go and have a look at them the so that's two now bearing in mind i'm also doing the palace the pleiades dress as well so we're on to three now but i've already constructed i know the construction of the um pleiades dress so i should be okay with that one i just need to get the fitting right now which is probably the most difficult part isn't it <laughs> so um the third thing is the sort of white linen shirt now i thought i had some white linen in my fabric stash um and then I remembered I'd made Amy the Fitzroy blouse, which used the linen. So I have got some blue linen here and I have some coral linen as well. But I'm thinking at the moment, I, I, I had my idea on a, on a white linen shirt, so I might have to get a little bit of white linen. But um, I do have the blue and I know I've got plenty of um, fabric in that to make a shirt up with. So again, I've got three options with the, with the shirt. Um, varying in details and complexity I think so the first one is the Maker's Atelier pull-on shirt I have a ready-to-wear shirt that I got from Marks and Spencers which is very similar to this it's just got the um, open neckline and then you sort of pull it on over your jeans it's I think of the three that I've chosen this is probably going to be the least complicated of all three um, but I like that sort of lot of loose pulling it over type style. This one um, takes up to two metres for the largest size. So again, I've got plenty of um, fabric for it. The finished bust measurements are 42 and a half up to 60 and a half with that one. So that was option number one. Option number two is slightly more complicated, which is the Maison Fauve Atlas shirt and dress. Again, another French pattern. Um, I've chosen this one because I like the fact that you've got both the shirt and the dress option with this one. And I've made quite a few shirts and blouses recently that's got the pleating across the front of the chest here, whereas this one's got the pleats that run um, vertically rather than horizontally and I think that's going to uh, looks like it's a really nice sort of design detail on that one so it's a pleated front with a button placket um, and you have a, ga a gathered sleeve or a shortened sleeve or along the, the longer sleeve and I'd probably go for the longer sleeve in this one it takes between 1.8 meters and 2.3 so we're okay meterage wise and it's um, 34 to 42 on the bust, I think, or 44 to 52. Ah, sorry, 34 to 42 or 44 to 52 as finished garment measurement sizes. I've written so many notes down and I haven't got my glasses on. <laughs> There's also video tutorial with this one as well as um, the instructions, both in French and English. But I'm quite, I'm leaning, like, this is the one I'm leaning towards of all three. Now, the third one is a Lena Line Patterns Misha shirt. Now, this one is an oversized shirt with these huge statement sleeves on it. The sleeves have got pleating at the top and pleating at the bottom. Um, I think it's just the sleeves, I think, with this one that's drawn me to this one. Uh, it's got a hidden button placket in this one. It 
is a 46 to 56 finished measurement sizes on this one and it has different height options i haven't seen that in a blouse pattern before um so you have four different height options with this particular one which is uh unusual for me that one so three three of those sit tell me what you think if there's and then like uh, like with the trousers if there are any other patterns that you think i want something not quite a plain shirt something that's got a little bit of difference to it and i think of the three of the three the first one is the plainest of the three um but i think the sleeves on that last one is <laughs> i don't know how practical they'll be but there we go and then that's the shirt so that's three and then the next one or four including the dress the next one is um, a Love Notions pattern that I bought a couple of weeks ago. And I bought this fabric from Toro Fabrics. It's a really nice sort of stretch jersey fabric. And the Love Notions top has three different sleeve lengths. So you've got full length sleeve, three quarter length sleeve, or you can have it sleeveless. And you can have the front cropped or you can have it at the same length, I think. And I like the detail on this one. It's got the buttons are either side. So you've got four buttons down either side that run under the um, arms down to the bottom of the waist. Now, what I thought with this one, to make it slightly different, I could possibly put some grommets in it and use ribbons to tie it up. I'm gonna give it a practice on a piece of fabric first to see what it looks like. But I thought rather than the buttons and the buttonholes, the grommets with the ribbon ties going through might look quite nice. Tell me what you think. I think I'm being completely nanas here. Um, but yeah, this has got um, from sizes extra small to 5X, so 33 to 57 and a half inch bust. And it's got two different necklines with this one. You can have a boat neckline or a scoop. I'd probably go for the boat neckline. And also with this pattern, it's got a full bust with it as well. So that's with the jersey. I don't have any other options with that one. It's just whether or not we do the buttons or the ribbons. Tell me what you think. Um, and then finally, um, I wanted, I was watching um, Alex judge the other day. She put something on Instagram about a bag that she'd made. And I'm pretty sure she's done a vlog on this one as well, or part of one of her vlogs. And it was the Maria Marilla Walker bucket bag on Etsy. I will link it down below. And she has, with this pattern, there are three different bag options. So the one that I particularly like is the open bucket bag. There is one that's got a sort of a drawstring along the top of it, but I prefer the bucket bag version of this one. And I've got some leftover sort of green bits of um, canvas and some other bits actually to make it up with. I've made a couple of drawstring bags, or quite a few actually, for knitting projects and they're really handy but they don't have the pockets around the outside so when you're putting your knitting in I have to also then put my stitch markers and my scissors and all those sort of bits and pieces if you're sort of taking it away with you and I like the idea with this one that it's got the pockets on the outside so I can put the knitting project in the middle and then I can have in the pockets around the outside I can put all my bits and pieces so my scissors and my pattern and my stitch markers and all those sort of things so I'm going to have a go at making that up and hopefully I'll get that one done up sort of fairly quickly. I haven't made a bag for ages, actually. I'm quite looking forward to that one. Um, so, yeah, that's there. They're my plans for this month, um, along with, like I say, um, getting my preparations done for the So Frugal 23 challenge. And just finally, if you're interested at all, what I am wearing is the my latest um, knitting make. This is the Amy Loudon Clandon sweater. It's made in um, a knitting for olive merino held with their silk mohair. It knits up beautifully. It's so soft. This It does need a blocking. It needs blocking here. I was that keen to put it on. I haven't blocked it yet, but it, by blocking it, it will bring the design at the top out a little bit more. I've made three of these so far and I was a pattern tester um, for this one. It's a fantastic pattern. It's um, it's very intuitive when you're making this one up and, and this one and the Whitmore are two of my favourite patterns, but yeah, love this one. 
Um, so yeah, so that's it in terms of my plans for this month. Let me know your thoughts on the patterns, if you've got any other suggestions. And again, a huge thanks for all your support, for your likes and your comments. I love reading them. So um, yeah, let me know what you think and I will catch up with you all very soon. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.